Okay, in this video, we are going to look at the multi-core programming, and the microcontroller that we're going to look at is a parallax propeller. Now, the parallax propeller microcontroller is on board this module here. It's a dip module, so it's breadboard friendly, and it's called the FLIP. Now, the microcontroller is the P8X32A. It has eight cores. It has eight 32-bit microcontrollers on board. It runs on 3.3 volts, and it's clocked at 80 megahertz. Now each one of these cores, these microcontrollers, are called COGS and there's eight COGS and they're labeled 0 to 7. Now normally a microcontroller can only do one thing at a time so we use interrupts to make it look like we're doing more than one thing at a time but the Parallax propeller actually has eight microcontrollers on board so we can run eight tasks independently without interrupts. So I have a little circuit set up here and I have some tasks running so I'll demonstrate it. So first of all I'll plug in I'm plugging my servo power. You can see my servo running. So I have a bunch of tasks running. Now if you look at this LED here, I'm sending a PWM signal to this LED and it's about 5% PWM. You can have a look at the scope. Now the pulse width modulated signal is only 5%. So the LED is dimly lit. Now the next task we're going to look at is this LED here. And it's controlled by my infrared controller. I have it mapped to the 1 button and the 0 button, so if I press button number 1, LED comes on. If I press button number 0, the LED turns off. Now this is my infrared detector, so it's looking for a 30 kilohertz modulated infrared beam, and it's using the NEC protocol, so the NEC protocol is running on the parallax propeller. So if I press button number 1, you see the LED comes on, and if I press button 0, the LED goes out. Now the next task is my ping module, which is an ultrasonic distance measuring module. So if I bring an object up to the ping module, you can see the four LEDs indicating the distance. So that's running continuously on the parallax propeller. Now the last is my servo, and it's running a little test program. So it's showing zero degrees, then 90, then 180. So all these tasks are running at the same time, independently, without any interrupts. Okay, I reset the Parallax Propeller microcontroller, so no code is running. The only code that is running is Tachyon 4th, which is the fourth operating system. Now I have my USB connector connected up to the flip module, which is powering the module. And I have that connected up to my computer, which is running a serial terminal program called TerraTerm. So I can send commands now into the microcontroller into the Tachyon 4th operating system. Now on board the Tachyon 4th is a lot of turnkey code. There's code to build serial ports, TTLU arts, I2C, SPI, I can control all the GPIO pins, all 32. It has code for the NEC infrared protocol. It has code for the ping module and it has code for pulse width modulation and also for servos. So it's all on board Tachyon 4th. All I have to do is send commands now one of the commands I could send is to control the GPIO. So if I type one blink, it will blink this LED. So this LED is connected up to GPIO pins 1. This one is up to 3, 5, and 7. So if I type one blink on the keyboard, you'd see it's blinking. And if I go three blink, it will blink the next LED. And I could go on and on all the way up all 32 uh, GPIO pins. So I'll go back to pin number 1. I'll go one blink. Now I could change the frequency. I could type 5 hertz. It's blinking faster. I could type 60 hertz. It's blinking so fast we can't see it. So I'll turn on a speaker. I'll have a speaker hooked up to GPIO pin 1. So there's 60 hertz. I'll go 1000 hertz. And I'll turn it off. So now we could actually generate tones. So I will generate a series of sound effect tones on GPIO pin 1. And the first tone will be a beep. Next a bip. A siren. A ringtone. And the C scale. Now you see there are two LEDs blinking at different rates. Now each cog on the microcontroller 
has an A and B counter. So there's a total of 16 counters on the microcontroller. And they don't take any resources up from the microcontroller. So they could run on their own. So right now we're seeing two LEDs being blinked at different rates using the A and B counter. Now the propeller microcontroller is also available in a 40 pin dip package like you can see on my breadboard. So all you need is a serial EEPROM to get you up and running and also a 5 MHz crystal which is multiplied up to 80 MHz by the phase lock loop inside the microcontroller. Here's my reset switch. I also have an FTDI module, a USB to serial. It also supplies power, 3.3 volts, to the microcontroller. Here's my reset circuitry. Now you could program the parallax microcontroller in assembler, in spin, in C, in blocky prop, which is originally designed by MIT, or Tachyon 4. So this is the minimum circuit that you need, and it's basically what's on the parallax flip. So you could build up your own circuitry, minimum circuitry, to get you started with the parallax propeller. Okay, here are my programming tools that I currently use today. Now back in the day I used the Intel 8051, which was a real workhorse, and the Motorola 68HC11, and the Z8, which was a 16-bit version of the Z80. Now these are all considered legacy today, so today I'm using that Mega 328P microcontroller, which is on the Arduino Nano. It's very popular for general purpose projects. Now for more computing power, you get into the STM32 line, 32-bit microcontrollers. This is a Cortex-M4 ARM microcontroller. Now for very complex problems, you could get into FPGAs, CPLDs, or ASICs. And the propeller microcontroller falls in between because it has the characteristics of a microcontroller and also of an FPGA or CPLD. So it's kind of unique, but it's very, very easy to use. And it can make your projects a lot simpler. Because I actually used this in a, in a project where I was having four lower modules connected up to four serial, serial ports. So data was coming in all at the same time on all four of these lower modules. And the propeller microcontroller made the code a lot simpler. Also did this with STM32. You've got to get the, the interrupts just right. And if you don't, you're going to have problems. So this solved a lot of problems and made the code a lot simpler. So in this video, I just wanted to give you a primer on how the propeller microcontroller operates.